Okay, please be seated. Good morning. Let me welcome you to the Woodrow Wilson Center on behalf of Jane Harmon, my president, and, and to this, uh, this presentation by, uh, by the um, foreign ministers, Jibril Basoli of uh, Burkina Faso. Uh, it's uh, uh, a rainy morning, not an easy morning to be out, so we appreciate your, your attendance and your, your loyalty. But this should be a very, very interesting session. The foreign minister is going to speak to us just for about 10 minutes or so because what we want to do is have a dialogue. We know there's a great deal of interest in what's happening in the Sahel and northern Mali and, of course, the preparations for the election. And so he'll be speaking to all of those subjects. Uh, I do want to make a special welcome to, uh, uh, to our ambassadorial corps who's here. Uh, we have Ambassador uh, Sadeku from Niger, of course, Ambassador uh, uh, Buddha from, from Burkina Faso. Uh, let's see who else is in the house. Do we have uh, Ambassador Young from Senegal? I got her name here, but I don't see her. Oh, yes, there, there you are. Uh, and uh, and uh, Keita from uh, Mali, who I saw coming in earlier. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Blaise uh, Chidef uh, from uh, Guinea, who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, so I don't know if I can. Okay. Well, welcome to our ambassadorial corps. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Ogwa <laughs> from Benin. My very good friend, and why did I miss you down on the end there? <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. welcome to you all. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, again, this is, uh, of course, you're at the Woodrow Wilson Center, and uh, the center was established by Congress in 1968 for this very purpose of bringing together the, the uh, people who are involved in the making of policy uh, and, uh, and those who are uh, experts around those policy issues. Um, and uh, in that regard, we're extremely happy to have with us uh, 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 the foreign minister, uh, who I'm sure you all know, and I won't do a long introduction. Uh, he and I had the pleasure of first meeting long ago over a lunch with, uh, with uh, uh, Professor Charles Fields when we were talking about the situation in Burundi and, some, and, and how that might apply to the Ouagadougou uh, uh, efforts uh, on, um, on Ivory Coast. Uh, and um, we know, of course, he was foreign minister, and then he became special envoy to Darfur, and then came back to the foreign ministry. He's been very, very involved in conflict resolution and peace building efforts across the continent. And, uh, and uh, we're very happy to have a capable man of this caliber and this, uh, this stature uh, who is involved in the, the critical uh, uh, efforts around uh, the, uh, the peace uh, settlements uh, that we're seeking in, uh, in the Sahel and northern Niger, in Niger and northern Mali. Um, so, with no further ado, let me uh, invite uh, the foreign minister to the podium to speak, and then we will have uh, a time for uh, a dialogue with him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Mali and Sahel, my dear friend, Dan Smith from Darfur. <laughs> first, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to uh, Mr. Steve for giving me the opportunity to address, to address you on the security situation in the Sahel and the presidential election in Mali. You will recall that in this very room in March 2012, we shared views on the specific situation in Mali in a context marked at that time by the rebellion launched by MNLA in July 17, 2012, and the military coup d'etat which followed proper Captain Sanogo as head of state of Mali. We were all worried by the future of Mali, and we hoped that this broadly country will recover its stability as soon as possible. From this perspective, ECOWAS head of states during their extraordinary summit held in Abidjan on March 2012, appointed His Excellency Blaise Compaoré, President of Burkina Faso, 
as mediator for Mali <coughs> with for the following missions. Through dialogue, find a way to a return to normal constitutional order. Achieve normalization of the security situation in the northern Mali. I will be presenting these two points, the current situation in Mali, and finally, the way forward with your contribution. First, return to normal constitutional order. The coup d'etat, together with activities of armed groups in northern Mali, had weakened Republican institutions of Mali and had put its territorial integrity to a severe test. Thus, we undertook with Malian political organizations and the military, the military junta actions in order to restore and to stabilize institutions for, of the republic through the respect of constitutional order. The mediation also secured from Captain Sanogo a declaration through which he committed to restore constitutional order. Consequently, on April the 6th, 2012, he signed, Captain Sanogo of course, he signed a framework agreement with the mediation <coughs> to govern the modalities of return to constitutional order highlighted by the resignation of President Amadou Toumani Touré, stationing of military in barracks, appointment of National Assembly Speaker President John Kunda, as interim president in accordance with the Constitution of Mali, formation of a transitional government with a mission to securing a sustainable solution to the security crisis in the northern Mali, and organizing presidential elections on all the national territory. The implementation of the framework agreement <coughs> encountered some obstacles, of course, as you may know. And these obstacles including the argument over the duration of the transitional period limited to 40 days, <coughs> characterized aggression of the interim president by demonstrators on May 21, 2012, attempted counter coup d'etat perpetrated by the Red Beret, faithful to former President Atiti, against those involved in the putsch. Forced resignation of the Prime Minister Sheikh Mudibo Jara, and so forth. The spirit of dialogue which prevailed among stakeholders as well as support of ECOWAS and the international community made it possible to restore constitutional order and to get transitional government to adopt a roadmap, the implementation of which should lead, I hope, to the organization of presidential election in July 28th of this year. We will talk about, of course, the role of Captain Sanogo uh, later on. Second, normalization of security situation in Northern Mali. As for the normalization of the situation in Northern Mali, ECOWAS mediation, as part of actions undertaken, established contact with Tuareg Armed Movement, MNLA, which claimed Azawad independence, and Ansardin, which promoted Sharia law application. Taking into account the presence of extremist and terrorist groups, the methodology adopted by ECOWAS consisted 
in combining a military approach and a diplomatic approach with a view to establishing dialogue with identity groups. Continuing our efforts of mediation, we secure on December 4th in Ouagadougou a joint statement by MNLA and Ansar Dean through which these movements dropped their independence claim, renounced Sharia law application by force, committed to respect Mali territorial integrity, to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms, to promote human dignity and equality among citizens. Unfortunately, the fundamentalist group, the extremist groups, which did not have an interest in the process of reunification, launched an attack against the town of Kona and progressed towards the south with the aim to strengthen their position and to prevent ECOWAS troops to be deployed. Faced with this danger, and at the request of interim president, Jankunda Traoré, the French army launched a military offensive against these extremist and terrorist armed groups. Concomitantly, ECOWAS accelerated the deployment of its troops in northern Mali. The extremist groups, having been overpowered, it appeared necessary and urgent to reestablish dialogue between non-terrorist armed group and the transitional government with a view to creating conditions favorable for the organization of the presidential election on all Malian ter territory, including in Kidal, occupied by Tuareg armed groups. Thus, on July the 18th, we started direct on 8th of July, we started direct talks between the transitional government of Mali, the coordination of the National Movement of Liberation of Azawag, and the High Council of the Unity of Azawag. These direct talks were marked by strong participation of the representative of ECOWAS Associated Mediator, President Goodluck Jonathan, the High Representative of the African Union, the Special Representative of the UN, the Special Representative of the European Union, the Representative of OIC, as well as partners and friend countries for, of Mali. This dialogue led to the signing of preliminary agreement to the presidential elections and inclusive peace talks in Mali on June 18th adhered to by Arab movement of Azawad, another armed group, and the coordination of the movement and the patriotic forces of resistance through a solemn joint statement issue the same day. Under the preliminary agreement to the presidential elections and the inclusive peace talks in Mali, the signing parties committed themselves to a dialogue process to end the crisis in northern Mali in two phases, before the elections of the President of the Republic and after the elections. Before the presidential election, the parties committed to create the security conditions required for holding the presidential election on all the territory of Mali and particularly in Kidal region. From this perspective, the agreement provides with conditions on cessation of hostilities, lays the foundations for a gradual normalization and determines measures of implementation, accompaniment, and confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, after the presidential election, the agreement provides that 60 days after its installation, the new government of Mali 
in collaboration with Commission for Dialogue and Reconciliation, with the support of the international community, will engage peace talks with all community in the North, signing parties as well as signatory armed groups in order to establish a comprehensive and definitive peace. These peace talks will focus on administrative inst and institutional organization of Mali, in particular the regions of northern of Mali also indicated by some as Azawad. Integrated development strategy of the local government of Mali, reorganization of defense and security forces as well as program of disarmament, demobilization and socio-economic reintegration DDR of armed groups in Northern Mali. Improved administrative, economic, and political governance. Return of refugees and displaced persons and their reintegration. Protection and promotion of human rights in Mali. Justice and reconciliation. The implementation of the agreement continues under good conditions despite observed frictions which are inherent in this implementation of an agreement of this kind. Overall security situation in the northern Sahel zone. The situation in the Sahel region remains marked by persistence of factor of threat, including weak presence of government and lack of basic social services in some places, as well as uh, socioeconomic problems and precariousness. Interference among terrorist groups, all kind of trafficking, armed insurgencies, presence of cross-border terrorist groups, Three terrorist attacks against Niger, taking of hostage, instability in northern Libya, daily threat of Boko Haram terrorist group in Nigeria. These are many facts which show that, which show then insecurity still remains a challenge in the Sahel. The way forward, of course, on this, I rely on you, on your contribution. Uh, one cannot say we'll find the way forward uh, only within one organization or one uh, process. We have to share ideas. Nevertheless, I'll try to give some ideas. First, I think we have to help Mali to successfully hold the presidential elections on July 29th, I hope, on July 29th <laughs> of 2000, uh, 28, 28 of 2013, to establish authorities and legitimate institutions in the country towards a sustainable solution to repeated rebellions in this region. Promote an international cooperation with technical and financial partners for an improved democratic governance towards social and economic development. And this not only for Mali, but also for all the countries in the Sahel region. For all these countries, we have to promote anticipative governance likely to consolidate unity and national cohesion and avoid frustrations and exclusions. To involve all the components of communities in social, political, and economical life to avoid temptation by population, especially the youth, to join extre extremist and terrorist group. To conclude, I wish to welcome the involvement of the international community, which made it possible the signing of the preliminary agreement in Ouagadougou. This conferred 
an international dimension to the fight against terrorism and for the return of a sustainable peace. I thank you for the presence and your kind attention, and I look forward to your contribution, comments, and questions to enrich the reflection to find together sustainable solutions uh, to our concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, we will now uh, open the floor for questions and comments, as you've invited. Uh, let me remind you that uh, we are both being webcast live, and this morning we're being televised live on the C-SPAN network. Uh, so uh, when I recognize you, and we'll take two or three questions at a time, uh, please wait for the microphone to be delivered to you and give your name and your association quickly, and make your comments and your questions short so we can get through uh, uh, as much as we can. We have about uh, a little over 45 minutes uh, for this session, and the minister has been very kind to, uh, to, uh, to invite your, your input. So I open the floor. Okay, right here in front, I have the first one, and there at the back, the second one. Uh, Lawrence Freeman from uh, Executive Intelligence Review, the African Desk. Thank you very much for your comments. I think in terms of an approach, you're absolutely right. We, we have to think in the entire Sahel. It has to be a regional approach. I just came back from Mali, and I had the great opportunity to discover the inland Mali Delta. And this is an area of potential enormous development for food production. There's two million hectares to be developed and irrigated by the office of Niger in Segu. And I think if we use this as a center point, Mali can become a food exporter to the entire Sahel. So if we take a regional approach to food production with infrastructure, we need water management, we need a lot more energy than Obama promised last month, <laughs> we need rail transportation, and I think we should look at this regional development approach for the Sahel as a way of providing security because a military counterterrorism approach has failed in these areas in the desert, in the Sahara, in the Sahel, where people have no opportunity, no future, no jobs. So I wanted to hear comments on this kind of regional effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, let's take one right there. Sure. Hello. My name is Jose Ramos. I'm with Search for Common Ground. My question for the Excellency is how much of the peace process is new and how much of it is business as usual in the Sahel and Mali, for instance? Okay. All right, do we have one more? I see one right down here with uh, Ambassador Smith. Yeah. Dane, Smith. <laughs> Dane Smith, American University. Mr. Minister, pleasure to see you again. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about progress in security sector reform and in particular uh, how the uh, reform of the Malian military is going. It seems to me that's pretty critical to success in this endeavor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, those are three questions we'll take now. The first on development in a regional sense, uh, food production security. The second one on uh, how much of the process uh, on peace process is new, uh, building on old uh, 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 efforts, and then a specific security sector reform with the Malian army. Thank you. Yes, of course, I do agree that uh, we need uh, a regional approach and uh, especially in the, the sector of food productions. And for the peace to be sustainable, definitely, uh, we need to back it by a very strong commitment to develop uh, our, our region, not only within Mali, but within ECOWAS, uh, so that it could be uh, an integrated uh, development. But most importantly, I think that the, the people of the north of Mali should feel themselves part of these national efforts for development. And this is what we are all uh, looking for, how to create this feeling of national cohesion. And um, otherwise, uh, you can produce whatever you want in the in the, the, the south part of the of the country, which is very very rich. 
But if the Tuareg people, the Arab people, the Fulanis from the north are not part of it, that will not, that will not work. I, I agree, and this is part of uh, ECOWAS policy, how, how to, to promote uh, this uh, integrated uh, development. On the, I, I, I don't understand the, the second question. There. I'm not sure I do either, Jose. Would you give the microphone again and, uh, and yes. re redevelop <laughs> that question? Yeah, sure. So what I meant is how much of the new process is actually new in the sense that it's not what has been happening since the Malian uh, civil war, co-optation by the leadership of rebel groups? Uh, you, you are talking about... Uh, uh, the, the negotiation the aspect. Are the negotiations. Okay, let's say what we reach now is just an interim agreement. We are looking for a more comprehensive agreement, but uh, a transitional government cannot, cannot establish uh, a lasting peace. That's why we are all insisting now to have the elections uh, at the end of July so that the new authorities can promote an inclusive dialogue and reach a comprehensive, I hope that this time it will be a, compre a comprehensive and, and lasting peace. Of course, the, it is not new that uh, the Tuareg people in the north raise arms to, to fight against the central government. On this, if you allow me, uh, we should find a way to stop these repeated rebellions in the north. Uh, this rebellion is the fourth uh, since uh, uh, the independence. And we all have seen what was the consequences. MNLA, MNLA have started war against the government of Mali, but definitely the, the, the terrorist group take over the control of everything. And even MNLA at that time has lost the control. So we, we, should, not, we should not allow any groups to start again war, knowing that the consequences of this kind of, uh, of rebellions um, uh, will, bring, uh, will bring terrorist activities and so on. So that's why I, I think that uh, the international community and all the partners should, f should focus their efforts so that these negotiations be the last one. And for it to be uh, uh, good enough, of course, uh, it, it has to be, to be serious, definitely. And on the issue of, uh, of security, two aspects. The first is that in Mali, a uh, part of the army led by Captain Sanogo has perpetrated a coup d'etat. Uh, an army in our country should not, should not interfere in the political process, especially uh, with uh, with arms. This is the first thing we have to solve. How to keep the army in barracks, how to make sure that the army will not interfere in the political uh, governance. So the first reform should aim at giving to the military people uh, the, the best training so that they can focus on their task instead of interfering in the political, the political uh, process. The second uh, type of reform is how to make the army uh, operational mm -hmm. so that, yes, so that they can, they can fight efficiently against the new form of threat we know in our region, which is the terrorist activity. Our, our armies, not only in Mali, but uh, in all our countries, they should focus their new organization and training on the capacity uh, to stop the terrorist activities. 
And I, I think that in Mali, uh, they started uh, the reform uh, financed by the European Union. And uh, it, is, it is going well. I, I don't know the precise details, but I think that it is, things are improving uh, in Mali. Uh, may I use the uh, prerogative of the chair and follow up on Dane Smith's uh, a question just with one specific. You did mention when you were talking about activities to be undertaken and uh, after the elections that you would be looking at the DDR exercise, demobilization, disarmament, and reintegration. Uh, now that could imply that you're looking at the, the formation of a, of a new national army, uh, bringing in some of the uh, elements from the rebel forces, MNLA, uh, uh, and others, uh, as has been done in countries like Burundi, where, where there's an integration of armed forces. Is this a part of the reform that will take place? Um, I'm very cautious of talking <laughs> about <laughs> the integration of former uh, combatants in the National Army. It didn't work in Mali, so <laughs> we, <laughs> we, have to be, we have to be cautious. Uh, but definitely, when we were talking about DDR, uh, the R for reintegration is the social economic mm -hmm. reintegration, uh, definitely. Of course, uh, in the Ouagadougou agreement, the disarmament should be finalized after the signing of a comprehensive, a more comprehensive agreement. We will start with Cantonma and uh, things like this. And we all know that the combatants are not, all of them, all, all of them cannot be part of a national army. Because I know, I know, for peace and reconciliation, of course, we have to do something in this area. But uh, uh, in this, uh, the, the Malians will discuss, of course, we will, <laughs> we will try <laughs> to, to provide um, uh, good opportunities for them uh, in order to to reconcile themselves and of course to build a new strong army I agree also without the participation of the North people in this national army it could be difficult uh, to counter the terrorist mm -hmm. activity because they know more than the South people uh, the region of the of the North but all these, all these uh, issues will be discussed within the, the comprehensive talks. Okay, so. okay understood. Okay, uh, we have one right in front with uh, Ambassador Sidiku, and then down here for the next question, and back up there for the third question. Thank you very much. <coughs> the Honorable Minister One can only commend and salute uh, the, the persistence, the patience of President Kampari and your own professionalism in in, in supporting our brothers of Mali to, to come back to normalcy, so to speak, and also you know, face the issues we're all facing in the region regarding terrorism. Uh, sometimes here we talk and I see people smile when I mention Marshall Plan <laughs> for the Sahel. Uh, and I always add, this has to start with us Africans, ECOWAS in particular, but has, but has a biggie like Nigeria, for example, with resources and others. And then from there, really have our partners support that idea because of the issues you mentioned. You cannot have inclusiveness if you don't have the resources to, to include people. Somebody said on, plan, on, on Planet Ipa a partir du Néan, you really need resources. Uh, secondly, I would say that uh, uh, Marshall Plan would also, let's, put it, let's give it an African name. I don't know which one, but we have to think about that some, somehow. I, I was wondering how much of that conversation are you having at your level, at ECOWAS level, with our partners, the U.S. and others? Thank you very much. Okay, and then uh, yeah, here, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Mohamed Toba. I'm from the Library, the Library of Congress, but I'm originally from Mauritania, so I, I'm. Uh, uh, so, um, my question is a little bit far from the question of uh, Excellency. I want to ask you, um, I want to be back to the security, um, security uh, issues. And the f I know that you, you, you have been very close to uh, these groups and you negotiated with them. And you, I think you personally know Ayat Khali, for, for example, the leader of Ansar bin. 
And uh, my question is, what, uh, from your perspective, what do you think remain from Ansaruddin? Uh, from the fact that we know that a lot of uh, Ansaruddin leaders are part of uh, uh, current um, uh, process, peace process. And uh, my second question also, uh, how, uh, how um, wise do you think is uh, the fact that we kind of cornered Iyad Qali, the fact that he's now labeled like a terrorist um, leader. So is that going to have an impact on how the process, the peace process, is going to evolve in the future? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Shen. Morning. Thank you for this meeting. Um, my concern is about... Uh, Identify yourself, please. Uh, Paul Sankara from Burkina Faso. My concern is about uh, the common causes that can lead to uh, this type of crisis. The minister said that uh, Mali's uh, crisis has uh, specific uh, causes. Yes, but in Burkina, we have a bloody regime since 1987, the lack of alternance, a, car a quarter of century on the power, the implication of uh, Burkina government in uh, uh, a lot of crisis in, uh, in Africa, Angola, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ivory Coast. The gold issue recently uh, has referred to a French uh, newspaper, uh, La Lettre du Continent, said that 25 members of the government are uh, stealing the, the, the gold in Burkina Faso, and the minister knows what I'm talking about. So the question is, how can Burkina Faso government be able to talk about peace, development, in Mali, knowing that with uh, the struggle against corruption, with the lack of alternance, it's open to many kinds of situation like in, in Mali. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the three questions that we'll deal with, uh, first of all, the maybe we'll call it the Wagadugu plan or the Bamako plan. Anyway, the bringing to bear of international resources on the, on the situation. And then the second, Mohammed's question on, on sardine and and, uh, and and actually a broader question of when uh, when people go on the terrorist list, when uh, you know how, how do you deal with them? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the uh, the issue about uh, you know Burkina Faso's role and uh, and and legitimacy in this context. Good. On the plan Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I agree. I fully agree with you. Uh, we need a plan. Uh, but for there to be a good plan for development, we have to prepare our people for that. You have been talking about the Plan Marshall. The Plan Marshall is a reconstruction plan, which means there was something before, of course, that had been destroyed by, by war. In Sahel region, unfortunately, you know this issue better than I do, there is nothing. There is no administration, no state, no good organization. So we need more than a plan Marshall, my brother. <laughs> we, 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 need, we need, first of all, uh, to, to promote, as I've said, the national cohesion, the internal cohesion in all our countries, based on dialogue and full participation of all the communities. And second, of course, I do agree, we need our partners, financial and uh, technical partners, to help us. Uh, one country uh, cannot um, meet the expectation of the people in Sahel. We have to combine our efforts. Uh, certainly, uh, the next uh, summit, ECOWAS uh, summit, will, um, will focus more attention on this uh, particular issue of, uh, of Sahel. The second question uh, concerning Iyad al-Ghali. Uh, I understand, uh, my brother, I understand you, you the, the issue you, you want to raise. Uh, I agree that um, Yad al-Ghali is the link between 
the arm, the twenty arm movement, and some of the terrorist group. But he was involved, of course, in the Ouagadougou discussions last year. Unfortunately, uh, the attack launched by the extremist group was at certain point led by uh, Yad al Ghali. Now he disappeared. I don't know exactly where he is. Uh, but what I want to emphasize here is the need for the Tuareg groups, the non terrorist armed movement, to distance themselves frankly from the terrorist activities. If they want to make peace with Mali and with uh, all the countries of, uh, of ECOWAS. We didn't want the Tuareg group to be divided. That's why we call for talks. Emenela and Ansardine at the time, even, even we know that the Ansardine was by its own ideology close to the terrorist and uh, Islamist group. They commit themselves to be part of a normal process of normalization. So let's go with them. And that's why I, I am in insisting on taking our people from the terrorist activities. Otherwise, uh, they will still uh, have this kind of complicity with uh, the outside, uh, the outside uh, groups. Uh, so I, I think that um, the, the remaining of Ansardine was uh, M M -E -A, M -E -A, uh, movement, movement of uh, Islamic of Azawad. They combine their efforts with MNLA so that we discuss with one entity. In addition to that, the Arab groups, MAA, and uh, all the auto defense groups, Gandakoi, Gandazo, Gandazoi, they, they join this Ouagadougou agreement. Uh, we, we are now implementing this agreement with the non terrorist. Uh, armed groups in the northern of Mali. The third question, uh, <laughs> you, your name is Sankara. <laughs> okay, good. I understand your question. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. And this will be a national debate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well handled, sir. Uh, okay, we'll take another round of questions. The first hand I see is right here. Ali. Thank you. And then down in front here and in front here. Good morning, I am Amira Woods from Liberia here at the Institute for Policy Studies. Thank you to Steve, Mamkadi, and team for uh, creating the space for this conversation. Thanks also to C-SPAN for covering this. <laughs> we encourage you to cover more on Africa. Um, Your Excellency, I, I guess I have two questions. The first is probably simpler. It's, it's uh, if you could just give us an update on the situation of refugees in the region and a sense of um, the international community's response to the refugee crisis, how that's evolving. The second is probably a more complicated. It's on the, the questions of the security sector. You, um, you mentioned getting the best training <laughs> for the military. I guess I wonder if there is critique within ECOWAS, within the region, of uh, particularly the U.S. Uh, Trans-Sahel Initiative focused on counterterrorism that Captain Sunogo and others in his cohort participated in for the last decade. Uh, is there a critique <laughs> in the region of this strategy? Because that, uh, for many of us, is the core of the problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay. No, I don't, don't encourage that two-question uh, example that you set. Uh, it's okay, Amira. Okay, so right here, Ali. Mm -hmm. Second row. Second row. My name is uh, Guy Lengani. I'm the president of uh, Burkina Faso Diaspora in uh, the Greater Washington, D.C. Uh, Excellency, my question is this. Uh, following the events in Mali, uh, the president, Francois Hollande, mentioned about the needs of creating uh, uh, an army for the whole Africa. And uh, my question is very simple. Can you please uh, comment on that, knowing that we also have the ECOWAS? And what is the thinking of the different government in regard to this army? Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. And then the question here, yes. Thank you very much. My name is Zango Abdu, uh, Embassy of Nigeria. Uh, without sounding to repeat uh, the Marshall Plan, uh, mm -hmm. revisit the Marshall Plan, I think the Ambassador of Nigeria is very right. I think it's at the core of the problem. Uh, at the core of all these problems in the Sahel is the issue of poverty, climate change, and all those challenges that have remained for decades uh, insurmountable. And I think uh, African leaders, particularly ECOWAS, we have a responsibility to address that. If we don't address that, we leave that gap to be filled by terrorists and the insurgents. And that's exactly what has been happening over the decades. All of us are related in one way or the other, through economic, historical, and other interaction. These same problems will continue to resonate from Niger to Nigeria, just as you highlighted your excellency in your brief, Boko Haram and all those. I recall very well a very small regional group in the Sansat Sahel Sahara group during Gaddafi instituted a small volunteer and other economic assistance program. And uh, it's assisting those countries, Mauritania, Chad, um, volunteer programs, economic development, siting projects, even at that level. And uh, so I think the ambassador of Nigeria is right. This should be a top on the agenda uh, in Africa. We must address our own problems. We cannot continue to rely on other partners. And uh, if you look at, uh, like uh, Larry rightly pointed out, the counterterrorism and other initiatives have failed. Every time we have problems, the West and the rest are quick to rush in arms, uh, heavy military equipment, quick intervention, but when they leave, the problems still remain with us. So the fundamental issue is to address the economic problem. The bread and butter issue is the key issue. Unless we address that, we'll continue to have more malice. We'll continue to have more chad, and all this conflict will continue to remain endemic in the continent. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ambassador. All right, that gives us a lot to address. First of all, the refugee question. Second of all, the question on uh, military training, and I would agree with that. Uh, certainly the West is, uh, in through the work we've been done with AFRICOM and DRC, uh, the Trans-Sahel work does not seem to have the answer to the right kind of military training for Africa, so what should be done there? The Africa Army question, uh, Francois Hollande's uh, suggestion, how you deal with that, and then, then a, a further plea <laughs> on the plan Masha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. On the, on the refugees, um, now I think uh, 400,000 people from uh, Niger fled away and are in Niger, Burkina Faso, Algeria, and I think some of them in Mauritania. Of course, we host them, but definitely we need to bring them back home. We need to create a conducive environment so that they can, they can go back. Unfortunately, this refugee uh, will not be able to vote uh, within Mali. Mm -hmm. This is unfortunate. I, I may say that uh, because uh, even symbolically, it would have been better to get them back home. But uh, since they are part of it, I think uh, uh, we, 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 we can, can deal with it. Uh, I would like to express my gratitude to the, to the international partners. Really, they support our effort. You know that um, at the time they, they entered in Burkina Faso, we were facing a food crisis. Uh, despite all these difficulties, uh, we managed to take care of them. Uh, with the support, of course, of our partners. It, there was a very good spirit of solidarity, I may say, uh, uh, this time. So uh, the Ouagadougou Agreement um, will, uh, the good implementation of this agreement will allow all of them to, to go back uh, home very soon, I, I, I hope. Now, the, on the training, uh, there's only two aspects. The first aspect is the spirit. A good army should have a good spirit 
uh, as we say, a Republican spirit. This is the first thing to do. A good army should not be allowed to make a uh, coup d'etat, of course. Uh, my brother Sankara. <laughs> we we have to we have to to train to train our our young officers on, on that. Uh, concerning Sanogo, I'm not defending Sanogo, but what I can say is uh, Sanogo implemented what he committed for, what he signed. We hope. We signed the framework agreement on the 6th of April, and Sanogo implemented it very well. So I am not, I am not uh, advocating for Sanogo, of course, uh, but as far as the mediation is concerned, I have to tell the truth. There is no obstacle from the side of the junta regarding the process, the electoral process. And even the minister in charge of interior is member of the junta, <laughs> the colonel Cinco. And he is performing very well. And he is the one who is doing everything so that on the 28th of July, these elections in Mali be possible. So uh, of course, of course, um, uh, we should now uh, avoid any kind of conflictual situation between the arm, uh, the, the, between the army and the political leaders. We have to clarify things. Every, everybody should play its own role properly, even behind the sign, of course. <laughs> it, that should be very clear. The you are talking about the second question. You are talking about the the next meeting in France regarding the security in Sahel. I'm not very comfortable right, saying that we will create a West African army or a Sahel army in 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 Paris. No, no. <laughs> we'll talk about. Uh, in general terms, we'll talk about how we can increase the security in the region of Sahel. Now the creation of army, how we want to defend our territory. This is really a question of sovereignty. I think that uh, the uh, head of state of ECOWAS should now find a way to do properly by themselves, what the French did for us. I thank the French government for having uh, <laughs> reacted uh, promptly and positively. But definitely, it should be uh, our own army. But we should not dream, of course. We cannot. Now, it is almost impossible. That's why. I think we need to call for the international cooperation. We need to call our friends, France, United States, and to, to help us, you know, putting in place the right forces, the good armies, disciplined armies, well-equipped armies, with good renseignement. Um, uh, so intelligence. intelligence, intelligence. Uh, so that they can they can protect uh, they can protect us from uh, terrorist activities. Uh, we will be part of it, of course. All the countries, all the Sahel countries, will be part of this Paris meeting in December, and uh, probably uh, we'll talk about uh, bilateral and multilateral cooperations among uh, the international partners. May, may I, before you go to yes, the last uh, question or comments by uh, our Nigerian colleague, uh, is there not already uh, a mechanism, at least in principle, within the Africa Union in terms of rapid response forces? Is that something you can build on in this case? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the African Union, uh, yes, I may say that. They are working on, uh, um, how do you call it, the troop... Um, uh, 
for some attempts. For some attempts, yeah. mm-hmm. this is this is true. Sand by sand by force, yes. Mm-hmm. But the the problem is the same. You know, uh, the our countries uh, do not have the capacity yeah. to equip mm-hmm. this uh, standby force uh, by the moment. But but we have to think about it. We have to think um, seriously about how in the Sahel region with uh, our northern partners, especially Algeria, and, uh, Morocco, Tunisia, and Libya, how, how we, can, we can create this kind of uh, standby forces mm-hmm. in Africa. Um, I agree. <laughs> Poverty is uh, not the only cause, but is part of uh, the root causes of the sit- uh, security situation in, in Sahel. But having said that, uh, yes, what should we do? Uh, I agree also that we should not uh, uh, wait for the Western countries to make the development for our countries and our region. We should first do something And that's why I think that the African countries, especially the ECOWAS and the the North Africa, should come together with a strong plan of development. Um, The problems are so complex. Uh, The threats are so high. We, we cannot we cannot without the participation of international community we cannot address properly all these issues I agree so but but w- we need something we need to do something first before uh, asking others to help to help us uh, definitely um, ambassador Sidiku is right uh, we need a plan <laughs> we need a plan we need a plan Marshall uh, let's let's um, start by doing something first within our countries. Let's create conducive environment, governance, good governance, peace, stability, internal cohesion, and before uh, before uh, talking about uh, sustainable development. Okay, I think we have time for another round of questions. I see the first hand right up there. And the second one just behind, yes, uh, or just to the side. And then the young lady here, yes. Hello, thank you very much, uh, you know, Mr. Steve, for giving me the opportunity to always express myself when I'm around here. <laughs> My name is Nyakala Guke, and I'm not a Sankara. <laughs> and I uh, <laughs> do not want to come back uh, to the question of the legitimacy of Burkina Faso. As we know that Burkina Faso was involved in a civil war in Ivory Coast, and the civil war in Sierra Leone, the civil war in Liberia, and all those civil wars, of course, in my eyes, in the eyes of millions of Africans, Burkina Faso does not have the legitimacy to try and talk about peace and governance in Africa. That's the first comment. Second thing, I was young uh, when Sankara was killed, and then I remember, and that's the transition in my country, that when you lose somebody dear to you, then you know you shave. And I'm not Burkina Bay, but I did that because as millions of Africans, we have, uh, you know, we admire Sankara. We saw that he was sincere in what he wanted to do for Burkina Faso and for Africa. But I had a prayer that if Sankara dies and the, the new leadership can at least bring stability and development to Burkina Faso, so be it. 26 years after the death of Thomas Sankara, we see that Spain is the leading nation today trying to promote solar power. And there is more sun in in Burkina Faso than in Spain. And Burkina Faso is still uh, poor and underdeveloped. What have you done in those 26 years after killing Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso? That's my question. Okay. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) All right. Next question right in the middle there, yes. Same line, yes. My name is Abdel Maliki, and I'm from the Global Civil Initiative. 
Uh, my question is simple. Uh, I don't think we should be in this room talking about this situation because people who were involved in the African issue saw this coming five, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Foreign Minister, what can we do to not get ourselves no more in this situation in the region? From Burkina Faso, from Mali, from Ivory Coast, all the way to Nigeria. Because we saw this situation coming again with Boko Haram, with all those groups. And everyone is learning from what happened to Mali and think that they can do it again in other country like Benin, Togo, and all those. So what's the plan for from our government in those regions to stop that happen again? And how can we avoid it? Let's think about the better future for our region and for Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Not such a simple question after all. Uh, <laughs> b b uh, uh, Billy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily Fornoff from USIP. Uh, my question is, I was wondering if you could comment on how successful you think the elections are going to be at the end of the month, given the issues with voter ID card distribution and refugees. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, I'll let you handle that first question, as you will. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, but, but there's uh, you know, a developmental issue yes. there he brings up, which is legitimate. Uh, and then Abdul's question, I think really based on the prevention, lessons learned, I think that's uh, a yes. very, very, very important question. And then what about the elections? What do you think is going to happen? Okay. On the first, the, 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 the first question is not really a question. I took note of what you have said. And... Uh, we are uh, in a free exchange of idea. I took note. Thank you very much. For uh, it, we are talking about uh, Mali, Sahel, and stability on overall region. So yes. thank you very much for your remarks. Uh, I took note of it. On the mm. overall situation, uh, I think uh, we are now trying, as Burkina Faso, to contribute to peace and stability in all the neighboring countries. Um, on the prevention to stop what happened in Mali to, to happen again, this is a program. And this is why we are here trying to, to exchange ideas. I'm so glad that you raised the issue like this. It is our responsibility to do something. We have been talking in Mali about a coup d'etat and a rebellion, armed group activities in the north. And these two threats bring us to where we are now. So we have to sensitize our people. We have to sensitize the youth for not making use of violence to pose their demands, of course. This is the first thing I think. Because on the northern part of Mali, as we have said, the MNLA rebellion is the fourth in this region of Mali. Niger um, uh, did the same, but fortunately for Niger, I think they managed to solve the problem to integrate uh, all the armed groups properly to make peace and reconciliation. And I think that today the Prime Minister is, is uh, at, at, yes, at Tuare. Uh, I don't, no, no, I, I'm not saying that he's a former rebel. No, he's, he's, <laughs> 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 he is Tuareg. That, that means clearly that they finally achieved a good integration and reconciliation in Niger. We hope the same to happen in Mali. And more generally, I think that the, our countries should focus efforts on this. We should be united, we should be strong enough, and we should be stable, despite all what we faced in the past, this past this, this, despite all the critical and political situation we have to preserve the stability and the internal 
cohesion. And finally, we need to think about prevention. We, of course, uh, as uh, the ECOWAS mediation, we try to solve the problem of the crisis in Mali. Thanks God, we managed to bring peace. We managed to, uh, to reach an agreement in Mali, in Niger, in Côte d'Ivoire, in Togo. But this is, this is the, the, the physician after the death. <laughs> now we, we need a strong policy of, of prevention. Uh, it is a huge program, of course, and I'm glad that you raised this issue. And uh, it is likely that the head of state uh, will react on the same way how we can prevent all this to happen again. On the elections, uh, you're right. Uh, I was in favor of delaying the, the elections in Mali for two reasons. First, we are now in the rainy season. And for those who know Africa, the rainy season really is an obstacle. First of all, for people to go to the the po polling stations, oh, yeah. poll stations, especially in the rural uh, areas. And second, because of the the activities, they have to go to 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 farm, and they they don't have time. Even one day is very important for them. They don't have time to go for elections. And the second reason is the Ramadan period. For a country with 90% uh, of uh, Muslims, of course, uh, this is a problem. But clearly, the participation uh, will not be uh, very, very high. But now the question is, to delay for what? And I think it is better to have these elections on time to get from them a legitimate president and government so that they can take care of the issue of Mali, the issue of security and the issue of socioeconomic development, the issue of reconciliation. Um, but if technically there, there is a need to do something, yes, they can delay, but on a consensus, it should be a consensus among all the people. Otherwise, if the government of Mali, the president, President Jankunda, takes now the decision to delay it, certainly that will create uh, more difficulties. So that what I can what I, I can ask for is that the international community support the Malian to get these elections on on time. Uh, we still have uh, two weeks <laughs> to make it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it is likely that uh, we will go for a second round, I think, uh, with uh, 28 uh, candidates. It is likely that, I'm not sure, uh, but it is likely that we'll go for a, a second round of elections. So uh, let's do everything we can so that the first round and the second round be as perfect as we can for the stability of, of the country. If I may, though, I think Melanie's question was partly on the technical preparations for the elections as well, how because of the registration problems that seem to have popped up on the cards and things. Are those yes. going along well enough that we'll be able to meet the, the deadline? Yes. Since the government of Mali itself is saying that everything is okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I think we have time for two more questions, which I'll take. And the first hand is seen here, and the second hand right back there. Oh, oh we will give you a chance, Ambassador. <laughs> we'll take three questions. Uh, my name is uh, Bubaka Rodrago from uh, New York City. <coughs> uh, it's known that all the weapons that uh, people used in uh, North Mali came from uh, uh, Libya. And even uh, the rebel come from Libya. And after uh, they went from uh, the countries, they went back over there again. 
uh, south uh, Libya. And what at your level and ECOWAS level, what do you do or what do you have in plan to uh, avoid those people to come back and attack uh, the next, the very next target, which is Niger? This is my first question. Uh, we'll, s we'll stay with one question. We don't have time for uh, I warned it's against multiple. It's about the education and it's very important. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. The second part is uh, how to prevent uh, those kind of cycle, the violent cycle. We know that uh, the main core of the problem is education. People are not educated. When you are not educated and when you are angry, you need food. You are available for any kind of mm -hmm. uh, problem that people may uh, bring it to you. Even sometimes you not agree with it, but because you need to eat, you agree with it. Somebody, a young people who doesn't have any job will do that. So what do you have uh, in plan for that? Okay. To educate African people. Thank you very much. Okay. Second question, second to last. Penultimate. Hi, um, Your Excellency, thank you for being here. Um, I'm Ginger TCA from the United States African Development Foundation, and I'm curious a little bit, um, maybe a follow-on question to the gentleman before me. Um, he mentioned Libya, and you spoke a lot about ECOWAS states, but seeing as how Algeria and Mauritania have the larger borders involved in this conflict area, um, and they have slightly different approaches to the conflict and mediation efforts, and al they're also very heavily affected by AQMI and um, Mujuao. Um, I'm kind of curious about the role and engagement of those of those um, governments. Thank you very much. And Ambassador, you get the last question. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Minister and uh, Mr. MacDonald. Uh, when I ask for the floor, uh, my contribution is not uh, really a question. Okay. It is, uh, let's say, a contribution. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, in French, we usually say that uh, jamais deux sans trois. <laughs> I don't know how to translate that. I asked my brother from Niger to help me. <laughs> we didn't succeed. <laughs> Why I'm saying jamais 203? I'm saying that because uh, I remember when the crisis uh, broke out uh, in our region, I mean in the northern part of Mali, we were all upset because with the ending of the crisis in Cote d'Ivoire, we thought that uh, now the issue of uh, crisis is be uh, was behind us and we're going to uh, address ourselves to the issue of development. Unfortunately, that crisis broke out in the probably country of Mali. And uh, my president, President Ouattara, who was uh, at the time the chair of the ECOWAS, and his uh, colleagues, uh, head of state and government, have uh, rightfully designated uh, President Bless Compaore of Burkina Faso to be the mediator of that crisis. When I personally know that uh, it was President Burkina Faso of Burkina Faso President Bless Compaore who has been designated, I told myself that uh, Jamais 203. <laughs> <laughs> if, he, if he has succeeded to bring uh, peace in Togo, and while we were very upset and not, doing, not knowing where the solution in Cote d'Ivoire will come from, he has been able to contribute to bringing peace in my country. So when he has been designated that he's going to address the Malian issue, I say, for sure, the president will help bring the Malian people to peace and stability. And for sure, that is what is happening. Now that uh, this opportunity has been given to me, I cannot let it uh, go without mentioning that 
we in Côte d'Ivoire were very thankful to Burkina Faso for having helped us come back to peace because Côte d'Ivoire used to be a country of peace, stability, and prosperity and development. Mr. Minister, uh, before concluding, when uh, you are working hard in our region, but we also, your representative, I mean the ambassador of the ECOWAS countries here, we meet regularly. And uh, we are very uh, worried about the security issue. And most of the time we say that uh, our region globally is squeezed between the hammer and, comment le dit en anglais? And the, the nail. Ant entre le marteau et l'enclume. <laughs> Entre le marteau et l'enclume, between the hammer and the ram. I mean, the hammer was the jihadist in the north, and the l'enclume is the piracy issue in the Gulf of Guinea. <laughs> so, Mr. Minister, I know that the recently the meeting has been organized in Yaoundé to address the issue. Our second uh, uh, preoccupation is that issue. So these two issues should be addressed to, uh, together in order to make our region safe again, a region of prosperity and development. I support my colleague of uh, Niger who have uh, stressed the issue of Plan Marshall. I want to thank you for the brilliant presentation that you have made. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Ministre. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Minister, I think uh, probably the, the, the two questionnaires that at least the first question can be handled together about the role of Libya, uh, Algeria, Mauritania, uh, yes. uh, people coming from the north, how are you dealing with that? And then the issue of education. Okay. No, l let's say on the, the people, the armed movement, the groups coming from, uh, from Libya, of course, we all know what happened there and what have created this situation. Um, we should help the new Libyan authorities to put things in order in their country. It is not that easy um, because uh, the former regime of Gaddafi has really formed and equipped uh, militias. Militias uh, made up with uh, all these uh, Tuareg people uh, coming from Niger and, uh, and, and Mali. Having been defeated in their country, in Libya, uh, they, some of them, came to the northern part of Mali to try to help Menela so that they can have their own country, their own uh, space. It didn't work, of course. And it seemed that, you're right, uh, they, they went back home. I think the most important here is, is to, to develop this kind of cooperation with the Libyan's authorities. It is, not, it is not that easy to do, but uh, as uh, ECOWAS uh, within uh, the, um, this uh, regional organization uh, called SINSAT, uh, um, SINSAT, the, the new version of SINSAT, <laughs> of course, we need to promote this uh, security cooperation. And more generally with Le Pays du Champ. Uh, the Pays du Champ is Algeria, Niger, Mauritania, and Niger. And uh, we involve them in the process, the, 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 the peace process, as well as the implementation process. They are part of all the implementation mechanism uh, created by the, by the Ouagadougou Agreement. And immediately after the trip here in Washington, I'm planning to go to uh, Nouakchott and Alger 
uh, to talk about the agreement, the Ouagadougou agreement, and the next, uh, the next steps. Okay, now, uh, jamais deux sans toi. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate what, what you have said, and uh, thank you for these kind words. I'm the only thing I want to, I want to correct in my capacity of uh, OIC uh, special envoyé <laughs> is that we should not talk about jihadists and uh, Islamists. Let's talk about terrorists and criminal groups. You know, the jihad. The jihad is something, <laughs> I'm not uh, promoting the jihad, but um, this group should not be called a uh, jihad, jihadist group. And this is one of our policy in the OIC, because OIC, as an Islamic mm -hmm. organization, should be involved in finding the way to solve properly this kind of problem. Uh, all these groups are acting on behalf of Islam. This is not good for Islam, of course, for the, for the Muslim people. That's why the OIC uh, member states now are finding the way to, to, to help uh, solving the problem. I am happy to represent uh, the, the Secretary General of OIC, and we will focus on this uh, specific issue, how, how to, uh, to separate this group from the the religion of uh, of Islam it is very important uh, you know it, some people even now in West Africa are making the confusion terrorist equal Islam <laughs> this is a very negative and very bad message so this is the only thing I want to take the opportunity to to correct uh, the the true Islam is not uh, terrorist activity. The true Islam is uh, beyond all this. The true Islam is promoting reconciliation and peace and, and brotherhood. Um, this is all. <laughs> okay. Well, before we close and we thank uh, the foreign minister, I just remark that this has been a, a, an amazingly rich uh, session and discussion. I, I've really been pleased by this. Uh, I think looking at uh, at the issues like uh, uh, the the uh, the fact that you 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 don't get to uh, to uh, uh, a sustainable peace without addressing the core causes of a conflict and looking at education and and uh, and climate change and poverty and and et cetera. Prevention starts, of course, with do, doing this at home. But also what uh, His Excellency has said to us about the African responsibility in this. Obviously international partners like the United States uh, uh, stand ready to be of assistance but uh, but it's so encouraging to see you taking such a strong lead in the peace settlement and working on uh, good governance and and addressing these core causes and uh, of conflict uh, so this has uh, really been a pleasure for us to host you we like the message you sent uh, absolutely agree that we have got to learn because this is a problem in the United States as well that that terrorism and Islam are the same thing this is this is a lesson that needs very badly to be learned by American citizens as well as uh, the world over. Mm -hmm. So thank you again. Help me thank the the. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.